As a photographer, you must surely be looking at the images made by other photographers, people whose work you admire. Among the many things that you may also have noticed, that somehow the compositions of these photographers tend to be a lot more eye-catching. There is no magic wand which you can wave and your photography can become better all of a sudden. It does take a considerate amount of time and energy to develop the necessary skills to make great images. One thing that is also required is a good understanding of the compositional rules of photography. Hi, my name is JR and welcome to PhotographyCourse.net. Today, we're going to talk about compositional rules of photography. Yes, there are rules in photography, but don't get disheartened, these are not designed to superimpose on your creativity, rather you can consider them as guides, meaningful, tried and tested guidelines which have worked this far. Once you have mastered these rules, you will be able to go beyond them, break them whenever necessary so that you can create even more compelling images. Number one would be leading lines. Leading lines has been used by photographers in different ways to compose their images. However, the most dominant use of leading lines is that it draws the attention of the user to the main subject of the image. Sometimes though, leading lines is simply used to draw the eyes of the viewer deeper into the image. It remains one of the surefire ways to capture attention grabbing images, allowing the eyes to follow the line and wander into the image. Number two would be the rule of thirds. Probably the most talked about rule in photography is the rule of thirds. While using your camera's viewfinder or LCD screen, you may have accidentally come upon a grid line. Nine squared boxes arranged in three rows of three. If you turn it off without realizing what it is, you deprive yourself one of the best ways to compose correctly. Using the rule of thirds, Placing the most important aspect of the image on one of these intersecting points make the image more appealing to the human eye. Number three would be negative space. Negative space is all about leaving space and lots of it to ensure that the main subject occupies a small portion of it. How much space you leave depends on you and the final look of the image. One of the uses of negative space is in commercial and stock photography. Negative space allows an editor to put content and tagline. However, that is just commercial attribution. Certainly, the use of this rule is more to do with compositional value. Number four is horizon line. Always make sure that the horizon is straight. The horizon line need not to be right at the middle of the frame. I know it kind of looks right, but that's not necessarily useful. The horizon line should be either two-thirds the way down or up depending on whether the sky is more interesting or the foreground. Number five is symmetry and patterns. Symmetry is closely related with beauty. Perfect symmetry is always eye-catching. Try and incorporate anything that is symmetrical in your images and the quality of your compositions will go up automatically. Patterns are yet another aspect that lend a degree of interest to your images. So there you have it. Those are the basic compositional rules of photography. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like. If you want more videos like this, subscribe to our channel and don't forget to visit our website, photographycourse.net. Again, my name is JR and thank you for watching.